All right, so let's look at some examples of how we would use this dimensional analysis kind of in, in practice. So how many grams of aspirin are there in a 325 milligram tablet? So if we were to start with the number that we know, which is 325 milligrams, right? It's the only number given to us in the problem, and we want to know how many grams there are. So our job is to convert milligrams to grams. Well, you can see in the problem that there's no conversion given to us, which means it's probably one we need to know ourselves. Um, and we know, based on our metric numbers, that there's 1,000 milligrams is equal to one gram. So if you recall, milli is a smaller number, so that means we need a lot of the smaller one to equal one of the bigger one. So in this case, it's 1,000 milligrams um, is equal to one gram. So that's the equality. Now to use that as a conversion factor, we're going to go times, and we're going to um, basically do our conversion. Milligrams is going to go on the bottom, and grams is going to go on the top. So grams is going to be in the numerator, milligrams is going to be in the den denominator. That way we can cross off milligrams with milligrams down here. So now that we have the units in there, we need to write the numbers that are in there as well. We know that there's 1,000 milligrams per one gram, and that's going to equal, um, right, so just a reminder, right, we can cross off units if they show up in one unit in the numerator with every one in the denominator. So we're going to cross off milligrams, which is going to leave us with grams. And then we can also do the math. In here, we would take 325. We'd multiply it by 1. We'd multiply our numbers in the numerator together, 325 times 1, divided by 1,000. That's going to give us 0 0.325 grams, right? So that would say we have 0.325 grams of aspirin in that 325 milligram tablet. All right, so now the second part of the question says how many ounces of aspirin are a 325 milligram tablet? So this is one where we do need a little bit more information. So basically, we need to be able to convert milligrams to ounces. So to do this, I'm going to go back to that table that we had earlier in a previous lecture. Um, and now we want to look at ounces to milligrams. So, so if we look through the chart, we can see right here we have ounces, right? 16 ounces, but that converts it to pounds. So let's see if we can find anything else. Well, we have ounces to quarts. That doesn't really help us. Um, we come over here, and what you can see right there is we have a conversion from ounces to grams. So it's not directly ounces to milligrams like we were looking for. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that you're not always going to find a perfect conversion dealing with metric prefixes, but you should always be able to do those extra metric prefixes and those conversions between those yourself. So the fact that we have ounces to grams, that's exactly what we want, right? So we can go from ounces to grams, and then we can go from grams to milligrams. Um, so we need this one ounce is equal to 28.4 grams. So let's go back to the other slide and we'll write that number down. All right, so we have 28.4 grams is equal to one ounce. All right, so what do we do with this information? Um, let's start with the 325 milligrams. And we know that if we go from this 325 milligram number that's here, right, we can convert that to grams like we did in the earlier problem. And then once we have grams, we can go to ounces. So I could just start with the um, previous answer, but just to kind of show you how it would look lining everything up here, we're going to start with 325 milligrams. And first, we want to convert it to grams because we know that if we can get to grams, we can then get to ounces. So we're going to go down here. We're going to write 1,000 milligrams per one gram, right? And then... I like crossing out my units as I go. Milligrams cancels with milligrams. That leaves us with grams. So next, we have it in grams. And now we're going to go here and multiply. And now we want to get rid of the grams. So that means grams is going to go on the bottom. And we want to go from grams to ounces. So we're going to put ounces up top. And we have to fill in our numbers. 28.4 grams is one ounce. So again, we go through and cancel out our grams, 
Now we can say equals, and that's going to give us a number that's in ounces. So there's um, a couple different ways you could go through and do the math here. Um, so let me just kind of explain this. So you can go 325 times 1 times 1. Now I realize that you really don't have to multiply by 1, um, but imagine those numbers weren't 1. This might be helpful down the road. Um, and those are going to be all the numbers in your numerator. And you can take those and put them in parentheses, and then you're going to divide by the numbers in your denominator, which would be 1,000 times 28.4. So that's one way you could put the numbers in on your calculator. Um, another way is just whenever you're multiplying and dividing, you can almost go straight in a line. So this is actually how I do it. Um, so if I draw a line here just to separate what I'm about to say, uh, I would do 325, which is my first number, and then I go to my next term, and I could do times 1 divided by 1,000 times 1 divided by 28.4, right? So I basically go through each individual term, 325 times 1 divided by 1,000 times 1 divided by 28.4. Right, and that'll get me to the answer. And of course, if I were doing it, I would leave out the one. So I would really just do 325 divided by 1,000 divided by 28.4. Now, no matter which way you do this, you're going to end up getting the exact same answer. So it shouldn't really matter. Um, so the answer in this case, if you do 325 divided by um, the 1,000 times 28.4 in parentheses, or whether you do it kind of the way I have it over there in blue, it won't matter, and you're gonna get a number that says 0 0.0114 ounces. And the reason, right, if I, on my calculator right now, it says 0 0.0114436662. I need to write this with three significant figures, though, because my initial number was in three significant figures, right? Um, whenever we're doing multiplication and division, remember that significant figures is going to be whichever number you start with has the fewest number of significant figures. But direct conversions like this that you pull off a chart don't count into that. So it's going to be three numbers here. Um, this one would have three numbers as well. These ones don't count because we really don't even need to include the one there. It's really, right, 1,000 milligrams per gram or 28.4 grams per ounce. So that number doesn't really even need to be there. I just like putting one up there just to, as I go through it, just to see the number there. So all of that said, the overall answer here would be 0 .00, or sorry, 0 .0114 ounces. All right, so here's another problem. So the doctor writes down on an order form that a, um, a patient needs Synthroid, which is 450 MCG, which, as you might remember, stands for micrograms, PO daily. PO means by mouth. Um, so that's kind of a Latin term. So PO is uh, per oz, and that means by mouth uh, daily. So a tablet daily needs... 450 micrograms worth of those tablets daily. Now, the pharmacy, though, has Synthroid available in 0.15 milligram tablets. Okay, so then how many tablets or tabs would you administer to the patient? Well, what we have to do is kind of imagine this as a kind of a math problem, right? So the one thing I want to do here is this Synthroid that's 0.15 milligram tablets. Another way you could say that is 0.15 milligrams is equal to one tab, right? Or another way you could say that is you have 0.15 milligram per tablet or per tab. Um, for some reason, I'm exchanging tablet and tabs here. Um, so 0.15 milligrams per tablet. That is a conversion factor. Right? Anytime you're saying something per something else, that's going to be a conversion factor. Now, our problem here, though, is that our initial number is in micrograms. This number is in milligrams. So in order to do the math, we're going to have to do some conversion 
right, so that they are in the same units. So here's how I'm going to go ahead and solve this particular problem. I'm going to start with 450 micrograms. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the micro symbol, which is the same thing as the MCG. I'm writing it differently just so you can see it in different ways. Um, I want to be able to convert that to milligrams, right? Because I know that if I can figure out how many milligrams I have, I can figure out how many tablets I have. Well, you don't know a direct conversion from micrograms to milligrams. So I always recommend, you can sit there and try to figure it out, but it's a lot easier to convert everything through the base unit, right? The base unit just being grams. So in this case, I can say that there's one million micrograms per one gram, right? And this number, one million, I have on the bottom, sometimes people, you'll see it written as 10 to the sixth. That's the exact same thing. Um, depending on how good you are with math and what you feel comfortable with, you're more than welcome to just put 10 to the 6 there and make sure you enter that in on your calculator um, accordingly. Uh, this is going to lead to micrograms being canceled out. So now we would know how many grams we have, right? But we want to figure out how many milligrams we have. So now we have to do another conversion where we say, okay, we know we have grams and we want milligrams. Well, we know that there are 1,000 milligrams per one gram. So grams are going to cancel with grams. And now that we're in milligrams, now we can figure out how many tablets we have because we know that we have 0.15 milligrams per tab. Right? So now our milligrams cancel. It's absolutely important that your unit you're trying to convert to ends up in the numerator here. Right? and that all of your other units cancel out. And you can see that's exactly um, the case here. And if we went through and do the math, we could take 450 divided by a million times a thousand divided by 0.15. And all of that is going to add up to three tabs. three tabs. So you would tell that patient, take three of these a day, and hopefully that'll cure whatever their problem is. All right, so let's look at um, one more of these. So here's a question relating to density. So if you have the density of acetic acid is 1.05 grams per milliliter, what is the volume of five grams of acetic acid? So in this case, we're giving basically two numbers. We're given this 5.0 grams, and we're given 1.05 grams per milliliter. Um, this number is a conversion factor. Conversion factor. And I know that's a conversion factor because I have grams per milliliter. I have like the two different parts to it. So in almost every single problem we do, you're not going to start with your conversion factor. right? You're going to use that conversion factor to convert from one unit to another. So what we're going to start with here is 5 grams, because the question says, what is the volume? So one way to think about a conversion factor, it's like if I know the grams of something, I can figure out the milliliters because of the conversion factor. If I know the milliliters, I can calculate the grams because I know the conversion factor. So in this case, it's asking for the volume, right? Volume is going to be milliliters or liters or microliters or centiliters or deciliters, right? Anything that's involving liters, which is what we have here. So what is the volume? What's the milliliters when we have five grams? All right, so I know I can do that conversion. So I'm going to start with 5.0 grams, and I want to convert it to milliliters. Well, I know I have 1.05 grams per one milliliter. And if I do this math, right, the grams cancel out. And I'm going to get 5 divided by 1.05, which is going to equal 4.8 milliliters. Um, so if you type it in on your calculator, you'll get 4.7619, so on and so forth. However, I know that I need to have two significant figures in this answer, and that's because I have two significant figures in this number 5.0, and 
I have three significant figures in this 1.05 gram per milliliter. Um, I know there's only one significant figure that I wrote in milliliters there, but really we're looking at this number that's the 1.05. I really don't have to write the one there. That's not really a number that needs to be written. So I have two significant figures here, and I have three significant figures here. The rule whenever we're doing multiplication or division is that our answer is going to have the same number of significant figures as whatever one is the fewest, right? So two is the fewest, so our answer should have two significant figures. This answer is going to be 4.8 milliliters, and that would be the final answer.